वेलकम टू लेक्चर 27 ऑफ फाइनेंशियल रिस्क मैनेजमेंट एंड द टॉपिक दैट वी आर गोइंग टू कवर इन दिस लेक्चर इज वैल्यू एट रिस्क वी ए आर सो वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड वट वैल्यू एट रिस्क इज एंड वट आर डिफरेंट रेगुलेशन रिगार्डिंग वी ए आर इन बेजल टू so in previous uh, video we we introduced the concept of var and we said that we gave an example of a 1 million dollars as a var amount assumed var amount but that might give uh, the notion that var would be in terms of rupees or dollars but that is not necessary var can be in terms of rupees as i have as i have explained in previous example in dollar amounts uh, or it can be in percentages for example if i say that we are is 3% then that would mean <coughs> that we are 95% confident that our losses would be less than 93% and we are 5% there are there is a 5% chance that our losses would be <coughs> 3% or greater than that 3% of our portfolio so vr is the dollar or percentage loss in the portfolio or asset value that will be uh, equaled or exceeded only x percent of times so this x uh, re- uh, means the confidence interval uh, we can choose a confidence a different confidence interval but normally 1% 5% or 10% vr is calculated and by 1% vr means that and uh, at 99% confident uh, level 5% we are mean uh, 95% confident level this is what we discussed and 10% we are means 90% uh, confidence level uh, which we denote as we are 1 we are 5 or we are 10 so a we are 5 of 15000 rupees for example we find the we are a uh, 5% of 15000 rupees uh then that means that there is a 5% chance that on any given day the portfolio will experience a loss of 15000 or more so we are 95% there is there is a 95% chance that our losses would be less than 15000 but there is merely 5% chance that our losses would be equal to or greater than 15 uh, 15000 so this is how we interpret this 5% uh okay so uh there is one more definition of we are what loss level is such that we are x person confident it will not get exceed in n business days uh value at risk is a function of basically two variables it is the time horizon so n number of business days in previous example we saw a vr of 5% was given as 15000 rupees for one day if we go back to the example given day that means it is a one day vr but it is not necessary that we calculate a one day vr we can calculate a week vr 10 days vr or one month vr uh, so value at risk is a function of two variables it is a time horizon uh, and then there is a confidence interval and we, we just discussed that we are uh, 5% means uh, that we uh, our confidence level is 95% so the vr meyer used by a regulator for market risk is the loss on a trading book that can be expected to occur over 10 p- days period 1% of the time so remember uh, the basel 2 accord says that the vr calculated should be for 10 days period and it should be a 1% uh, vr that means that a 99% confidence level should be Uh, set 
the v value at risk of 1 million means that the bank is 99% confident remember if this is we are assuming that this is ver uh, of 1% right in that case um, um, and it is a ver of 10 days period remember in previous slide we discussed that there are two factors that affect ver one is the time horizon and the second is the confidence level so in this case confidence level is being set at 99 percent right and the time horizon has been set at 10 days so a value at risk of 1 million means that the bank is 99 percent confident there that there will uh, not be a loss greater than 1 million so there is a 99 percent confidence that the losses would not be greater than uh, 1 million over the next 10 days right this is important so the capital that is required is k times of the ver so let's say of if our ver is m and our k is 2 then our capital requirement would be 2 million uh, twice the amount of uh, the value that is at risk but how much should be the k that is also defined by basil uh, to it says that k is chosen on bank to bank basis by a regulator so this is where the central banks would come in and it must uh, be at least three so this is what had been defined the the floor had been set uh, even if the regulator wants they cannot drop the uh, the k lesser than three so that means if in uh, continuing the previous example if the ver is 1 million uh, and if minimum uh, k had been set by the regulator of three for a specific bank then that specific bank would have to maintain a capital of three million <laughs> in historical uh, data shows that VER Mayer did not perform well in the 250 trading days. This means that although uh, whatever the regulator uh, sets the K value for a bank, then even then they would have to monitor that if the VER Mayer did not perform well in last 250 trading days, uh, that means that had uh, not performed well then in that case k may, may be set as high as uh, 4 okay the capital requirement would then be k into uh, var plus the src and what SRC is the special risk charge it is primarily for the debt security held in the trading book so this is the specific charge that that would be applied on the trading uh, book items so the capital requirement would be K into VAR uh, plus the this, this amount but mean basically this this is the this is the formula if you simplify it then that would be k into ver whatever ver we find and the ver must be 99 percent confident level ver and it should be a 10 day ver whatever ver we find we should multiply it with the value of k and that would give us the capital requirement now coming to how do we uh, uh mayor k uh, ver how to estimate ver then ver would be the return minus the z value of that uh, at that specific chosen probability level or confidence level into the standard deviation um, and this would be clear in a while uh, so z a this is the chosen level of probability so if uh, now you would have understood from your statistics course that there is a tabulated value right table value for uh, for z uh, z tabulated value or t tabulated value so in this case we are considering a z value z tabulated value so for 95 percent confidence level there would be a z value uh, for uh, for similarly for 99 percent confidence level there would be another value of z a critical z value or tabulated z value so in this case 
1.28 is the z value table weighted value for 10% 1.65 is for 9% uh, 5% sorry and 2.33 is the tabulated value for 1% so these tabulated values uh, can easily be found in the uh, z table so if we have a set z value at 95% confident it will return the value of 1.65 of critical z which means that we are 95% confident that the worst negative change in our given variable will be 1.65 time of the standard deviation value that's when we multiply by uh, this 1.6 or the z value z tabulated value with the standard deviation so in this case this value would always always be known this would always be given so so we would uh, in case of uh, uh, according to basel uh, 2 we should take a 1% ver so it would always be 2.33 if we are following basel 2 Uh, and we would solve an example on this one and this would be more clear in that case so time horizon and appropriate choice for the time horizon depend on the application so for example trading desk of bank calculate the profit uh, and loss daily uh, their position are usually fairly liquid and actively managed this is why daily vr will be right choice for internal use so so the idea is what this says is that the time horizon remember there are two factors the time horizon and the confidence level the time horizon depends on the um, on the situation so if there is a trading desk if if, if a bank uh, would have a trading desk uh, and obviously that trading desk would buy and sell uh, assets on daily basis that's what trading is as opposed to investment or investing then they might want to have a daily VR. Uh, that would be appropriate for them similarly time horizon of one month is often chosen for pension funds because the portfolio is traded less actively and some instruments in the portfolio are less liquid so what this says is that um, in case of uh, a pension fund a ver of one month would be more appropriate because that pension fund normally not trade uh, as often as the trading desk of a bank uh, the one day VR can be converted into n day VR just to give you an idea uh, we are not going to apply this one if a one day VR had been given and we want to convert into n day VR then we, the, the simple formula is 1 minus the uh, the day VR into under root and n would be the number of data that we want to convert it to second uh, factor was confidence level so Basel committee has chosen a time horizon of 10 days and the confidence level of 99% for market risk. The confidence level is dependent, uh, primarily dependent upon the accuracy of VR measure over time. So if uh, the VR is uh, not accurate, then we might have to change the confidence level. The VR threshold is breached several times in the past. It can be suspected that the VR is underestimated so we would either have to increase or decrease the confidence interval now the dilemma is that the higher the confidence level is the greater would be the ver so if we increase the confidence level so if from for, for an example uh, if uh, instead of 95 percent we take 99 percent as confidence level then uh, in case of 95 if the ver was 1 million then in case of 99 percent it might be 1.5 million so if we increase the confidence level then the the VR would be uh, greater <coughs> and if we decrease the confidence level then obviously the VR would be less it is not clear how or whether one should uh, stop at 99 99.9 .9, and 99.9 .9, and so on each of these value will create an increasingly larger loss but, le but less likely so the idea is there is a trade-off between the uh, the likelihood the probability of occurrence of an event uh, and uh, the the amount of the loss uh, the the value of the ver so as we increase the uh, the confidence level the value of the ver would uh, would also increase another problem is that as confidence level increases the number of occurrence below ver shrinks so leading to a poor measure so this is what the dilemma is uh, okay 
so we we want to understand how do we measure this uh, ver so suppose there is a firm by by the name of abc uh, and has a portfolio worth of rupees 1 lakh average expected return on this portfolio is 10% so it expects that its portfolio return would be 10% the standard deviation of return is 8% Uh, so this data is monthly calculated five percent uh, monthly VR. So if data is monthly, then that VR uh, that we calculate would also be monthly. Okay. So now we know that uh, the formula of VR is return minus the Z value into the standard de deviation. So in this case, the Z value. At five percent, if we are going to calculate five uh, VR of five percent, then you can go back to the slides where it shows what would be the Z tabulated value at five percent, uh, and that is one point six five. Multiply by standard deviation. Uh, in this case, the standard deviation is ten uh, percent. So in this case, standard deviation is eight uh, percent, and R is ten <clears> percent. <throat> so this would give us uh, one point six five into eight. Would be thirteen point two. So ten minus thirteen point two would be minus three point two. So our loss, our VAR is three point two. That means that uh, at uh, any given time, we are ninety nine ninety five percent confident that our Loss would be less than three point two, and there is a merely five percent chance that our losses would be three point two percent, or greater than that. Three point two percent of what amount of our portfolio? So this is in percentages. If we want to convert it into amount, then we would simply find the three point two percent of this uh, this one lakh rupees, uh, and which would be thirty two hundred. So Our VR turns out to be thirty-two hundred rupees or three point two percent. There is another example. Uh, suppose we have a portfolio worth of seventeen million. Our daily expected return is seventeen percent. Daily standard deviation is thirteen. Calculate VR. So again, in this case, we are at ten percent. So we we would take one point two eight as the T. Critical value, tabulated value into thirteen percent is the standard deviation seventeen minus. So this would give us one point two eight into thirteen, a sixteen point six four, right? So seventeen minus sixteen point six four. This would give us. Point three six percent. So our VAR is point three six percent. So that means that uh, there is merely a ten percent chance. Uh, now, if you have noticed that as we have uh, decreased the confidence level, our VAR had also decreased. So there is merely a ten percent chance that our losses would exceed or would be equal to point three six percent of our portfolio. Again, if you wanted to find the Uh, the the amounts in in rupees, then you would simply find the point three six percent of seventeen uh, million, which turn out to be six one two zero zero. So so there is a ten percent chance that our loss would be sixty one thousand two hundred rupees or greater than that. <clears throat>